Hey, what's up, everybody? Dilkram here from Quality Beast. I got <laughs> Josh behind me, also from Quality Beast. And I don't know if you recognize this wild beast on the other side. <laughs> but um, this is Stephen Bailey, uh, better known as Razlo or The Razlo. Um, and like, thank you so much for joining us, uh, Stephen. No we, <laughs> we literally reached out to Stephen, I don't know, two hours ago. Uh, he's got a Kickstarter going on right now. It's in the final hours, so we just thought, let's just let's get on the let's let's get on the camera. Let's let's talk about the game, Billionaire Banshee. Let's play around. So that's what we're gonna be doing. And um, I just want to start by kind of going on a, a dating journey with Razlo uh, himself. So uh, just start out like, where's his nickname come from? Oh, why Razlo? Oh, but, yeah. Um, so yeah. You had mentioned my uh, birth name there, uh, Stephen Bailey, and um, you know, outside of uh, you know uh, James or John or <laughs> whatever, I mean, it's a pretty uh, standard name. Uh, you know, it's hard to uh, get people to know who you are uh, when it's you know it could be any generic name. So basically, the name was too generic, and I realized. Um, you know, pretty much, I think in like high school or whatever, that if I wanted to have anyone remember um, who I was at all, I stood a better chance using a nickname. And so I started using a nickname. Okay. Okay. And what was the creation story? Is there like a... Um, I, it was just a name that I used a lot um, when I would do like a Fallout or um, like tabletop RPGs or things like that. So uh, it was this cool. character that I always played when I played games. And then I was like, oh, I'll just be that person in real life. Everybody got the gaming <laughs> alias. It seems like a lot of people in the community come that come that direction. That's cool. Yeah. Okay. And um, I was uh, I was doing a little bit of research, uh, which I'm known to do before an interview, and I, I was checking out um, you know a billionaire banshee interview you gave to uh, BGG. I think it's Spiel 2015. Yep. Um, and uh, the woman who was interviewing you mentioned uh, Breaking Games. Is that a company right. you are part of or are part of, a, your own company? or? Uh, yeah, so I'm an independent uh, game designer. Uh, I'm a stay-at-home dad uh, during the day, and uh, then at night, uh, or when they're taking a nap, um, <laughs> I work on uh, game designs and toy designs uh, and, and video game designs and cool. you know whatever someone will uh, give me money to, to do. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Uh, cool. My, so my uh, company is called Game Yay Fun. Yeah. And uh, and then my publisher is Breaking Games. Okay. Okay. Um, so, so that's the relationship. Yep. Cool. Cool. Sweet. So, okay. Before we dive into uh, this amazing game right here, Billionaire Banshee, for everyone who can see, get that glare out the way. Um, before we dive into that, uh, we want to just talk about your other creations. So I, so in doing my research, I stumbled across this thing called Re-Extinction on right. BGG. And I just want to, in case someone hasn't heard of this game yet, I just want to read the description that I read on BGG. Yeah. It's, in Re-Extinction, dinosaurs have been resurrected for battle. Armor your dinosaurs to defend them from environmental hazards like stale grandma smell and boiling rivers of taco meat. Make every <laughs> other player's dino re-extinct and be the last surviving dinosaur. <laughs> Yep. That's so, my game, all right. <laughs> what? <laughs> is this game out? Did you? Is this something? That... It's not. It's not out yet. I, it's one of those things where uh, you know, I, I, a lot, it ends up happening where I am independent, but then um, my publisher will ask for something, or I'll get a opportunity to do something, um, and 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 so that game unfortunately had to get put on the back burner to do this expansion. Okay. Okay. Um, so there's about I got about two weeks left to work on that game to have it completely finished and then put out to uh, manufacturing. So it will be coming out this year. Mm -hmm. It's just not out yet. And the way I describe it in terms of how it plays is that it's basically um, it's a dinosaur dress up card combat game. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so everyone has a, a dinosaur that's three uh, tarot cards t uh, tall. <laughs> and if you ever had those uh, books as a kid where they're like split in three sections, oh, and like you could, like swap like the feet, you could swap. Like, okay, the okay, yeah, yeah, the exquisite head. corpse, it I guess, is what they call yeah, it. Yeah, so it's basically like that, but you have a so all your defense cards in this game are things that your dinosaur can physically wear. So as you're defending yourself <laughs> from things like boiling rivers of taco meat, 
you're putting stuff on your dinosaur's feet or wherever, and you're making your dinosaur look more ridiculous as you go. Okay. So, yeah. <laughs> We're down with that. That sounds pretty cool. Is that one going to Kickstarter too? Uh, that one's not going to Kickstarter because um, I know how the Kickstarter crowd is, and if you have one Kickstarter up and you haven't fulfilled yet and you try to put something else on Kickstarter, right. um, even if there's justifiable reasons to do that, uh, you will anger them. <laughs> um, and so I just know better than to do that. And so uh, I figured having uh, an expansion to a game that I already got funded on Kickstarter right. uh, on the platform made a lot more sense than uh, putting a game that I've been touring with for like the last two years um, getting you know a mailing list together of people that already want to buy it, um, that kind of sells itself, um, and and it doesn't have a built-in audience already. So yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Well, you were speaking like a little bit about the design of Reextinction. So when it comes to the design of Billionaire Banshee, one of the first things that we noticed was um, the way that you signify the different types of cards on the front. And in this interview right. before, you were saying like, okay, there's this. I guess it's like dominatrix. Where is it here? Where is this? I don't know if that's a correction. There's like this dirty bear um, yeah, yeah, yeah. to signify that the content of these cards shouldn't be played with your parents or something like that. Um, so how did you come to that design decision? Did, were you just like caught in the middle of like a really awkward moment with somebody? <laughs> Not really. It was just I noticed it, what would happen a lot of times with people, um, especially that played um, adult party games would be there'd be a situation where they really wanted to play the game when they're going to a party mm. but maybe it just slightly was outside of the realm of what that group of people would be okay playing right um, and then they ended up even though they could go through the deck and, and take out uh, cards if they searched hard enough the the amount of time and hassle that takes is is so great that it means they're gonna bring a game they didn't want to play it quite as much mm. um, and play that instead because it you know, because it was just too much of a hassle to, to edit it. So I thought if I remove the barrier for people to be able to adjust the game, uh, you know, even while they're in the middle of playing, it would make it so that people would play it more often. Oh, right. Like even as we're drawing cards, we can we see right. the dirty bear and we're like, nope, what? Right. And, it, and it, can be, it can be individual too. So let's say there's just like one player who's like, I don't like to answer these particular types of questions about myself. That's cool. When, if, if they get one of those cards on their turn, they can just you know go down the pile a little bit further and grab a card that's not that type of trait, and then they're still in the game playing, and they don't they're not impacting other people's ways of of answering questions or having fun. Right, right. That makes a lot of sense. So I guess like you probably did a bunch of play testing, and that's what I'm curious about. It seems you know we've, we've talked to other designers, and you know they have they have particular topics that they're looking at. One we talked to recently was talking about like tracking in a game, but it seems like actually with the kind of writing that you're doing in this game, that it's really about humor. So I guess, are you playtesting like the laughability of cards or the traction um, they get in that sense? Yeah, I mean, the main thing was, is, um, you know, with, with the, you know, there was a bunch of stages that the game went through. Um, initially, it was just as simple as the overarching trait. Um, and then eventually uh, realized that people were spending more time asking questions about, well, what about this? Or what about that? And then there's these huge debates about what th that actually meant. Um, and so then I added in the uh, bullet points that you see on every card. Right, that the try details. That clearly of it. define it and, and add some humor. And then that way it makes it so that, yeah, as you can see there. <laughs> um, and so it makes it so that uh, you know nobody uh, has to guess as to what's going on. So the discussion that's happening is around the person whose turn it is, and it's people talking about each other rather than about you know the card. Right. Okay. So yeah, less worrying about the components and more the right. the human interaction. Yeah, it's cool. Minimal barriers. The whole game is about minimal barriers. So I'm using like color cues, um, you know, icons and. Um, and that sort of thing to just make it so that regardless of, and you don't even have to keep track of uh, points to play the game. So, um, you know, if you're as drunk as someone sitting on a couch by um, a potted plant, barely able to keep your eyes open, you'd still be able to play the game, you know? Okay. <laughs> I don't know who you're talking about. <laughs> no, so, it's just a generic example. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so speaking about, you know, these beginners, these, these, these drunken <laughs> couch beginners, uh, you have any tips for them? Like how... How could they beat you at your own game, you know? Um, well, this is a game that if you're playing it with people that uh, you know, uh -huh. uh, your your entire uh, life with them 
has basically been your strategy guide to winning the game. Okay. Uh, and uh, if you're playing with strangers, it really comes down to um, how well are you able to intuit uh, how they're going to answer. So right. uh, first question when you get uh, when you're when you're with a stranger, you're you're kind of guessing or you're sizing them up. Uh, after they've answered one question, they start to build kind of like a psychological profile of themselves <laughs> through their answer, and then you're kind of trying to use that to uh, figure out how they're going to answer the rest of the questions. And sometimes it's like really surprising, and you you find that they're you know people don't make sense to each other because everyone <laughs> has like a different thought process, right? Right, right. Cool. And yeah, it's funny if you see two like two people that are actually together, but they're pretending to be single while they play the game, and then you see the disconnect or connect between them. <laughs> <laughs> well, the the funniest thing is I you know when I'm going and demoing the game at um, at uh, you know conventions and things, mm -hmm. I'll ask you know do you two know each other? And of course, if it's a couple, they like to play up how well they know each other and how ridiculous it was that I'd asked that. <laughs> and they're almost always the people that get the information wrong about each other. Uh, <laughs> Because when it comes right down to it, like you probably haven't asked your significant other if they'd be cool with spending the rest of their life with a masseuse that's a centaur, you know? Maybe they didn't get around <laughs> to that question yet, Yeah. even if you've been together seven years. Yeah, we did try to get my, my wife into the mix tonight, but she wasn't having it, so. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, okay, so there, there's the base game, but there's also two expansions, right? There's the Australia Booster from 2015. Yeah, we have like... Uh, so the first actual like full expansion, uh, you know, a uh, big chunk of cards is the one that's on Kickstarter right now. Oh, okay. Um, but other okay. than that, um, we've done these like booster packs to kind of like right. add a few extra cards while people waited for the expansion. Um, and the first one is um, for the first time I went to PAX Australia, I did a. Um, they wanted me to sell something, uh, you know, exclusive in at that convention. Mm -hmm. And I was trying to think of what was a way that I could do that without really making people angry at me. Right. Um, and so I made cards that are so specific to Australia that they probably don't make any sense to you unless you're Australian. <laughs> okay, um, okay. And so then that way, it's not like there are cards that are burning, uh, you know, the potential uh, in other sets. They're cards that you're just going to look at and scratch your head. Uh, but if you're Australian, you're like, oh, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. I'm totally all about that, <laughs> you know. But you're not Australian, um, so how did that, like, what's the deal with that? Like, how did you do your so research for that? <laughs> well, I mean, I'm, I'm also not, you know, um, into bloodletting or um, <laughs> or a lot of the other things that are on the cards. Uh, so okay, okay. <laughs> what happens is I'll, I will do, uh, it's, it's probably the weirdest uh, game to work on uh, because I'm either doing... Um, a combination of you know my browser history is very strange um, <laughs> I'm researching this stuff and then also uh, I do specifically ask people that have each trait so if I'm, if I'm doing a card about uh, narcolepsy I'll find someone that you know has that, that has narcolepsy say really? hey, is this yeah 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 and I'll have them because you know as I just don't it doesn't have to bring true for every person with that particular trait nothing right. would but as long as it makes sense and it's something that you know someone could have um, if it rings true to that person it doesn't come off as offensive to uh, that group if at all possible then then i try to do that cool yeah that's pretty sweet and there was also another booster called the sexy foil pack in 2017 right, right? yeah 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 we just released that like probably like two weeks before the kickstarter started mm -hmm. uh, and so in the original game i put the least amount like so there's uh, you were talking about the different types of traits earlier um, there's reality-based traits, there's fantasy-based traits, and then there's sexy traits, and uh, that was those were the ones that had the bear with the whip and the leather. Right. Um, and uh, and but I put the least number of those in the original pack because I wasn't sure if uh, I knew that lovers or you know people who, who are intimate would have would probably be into talking about that topic, but I wasn't sure if strangers or or friends wanted to be that revealing about themselves right. um, in a party scene. And so um, I wanted it there for the people that were interested, but I think it was like probably like 25% or less of the cards were um, sexy traits in the original version. Um, and so this pack was a way before the expansion came to kind of fill in, um, you know, 20 new sexy cards, whereas there were the least number of those in the original set. So okay. because what I found was that people actually really liked talking about those um, <laughs> Most people, anyways, to the point that some of them will front load all the sexy traits. What, uh, really? Like, so. stack the deck? 
<laughs> yeah, and it's interesting. I think there's like a interesting psychological thing where if I was to walk up to a random stranger and say, um, you know, are you into butt stuff? They would they would really question what I was doing. They'd get offended. Um, <laughs> they'd tell me to go away. I'm a creep, etc. Um, but as soon as I put a card game in front of them, and it, I've known them for the, the same amount of time, and a card asks them that, uh, they're like, yeah, well, let me tell you my full history. <laughs> so it's just it's just interesting that it takes down um, these walls that we put up um, with our with our privacy. Mm. And I think when people end up revealing stuff that they never thought that they would reveal to um, friends or, or strangers, they realize that it probably isn't that big of a deal. It, it really wasn't a secret that was worth uh, keeping. Yeah, it's actually a cool part about the community, right? That you playing yeah. games together, you know, tabletop adventures, board games, card games, whatever it is, really takes down those social barriers and right. lets people spend time together. So, talking yeah. about people spending time together, last time I checked, you had 410 people uh, spending time uh, pledging on the campaign, which is it's just, it's about to break fifteen thousand dollars, right? I I mean that's a possibility. Let me see. I... <laughs> <laughs> I've been looking at it since we've been on this call. But let's let's. I'm gonna do a live look here. <laughs> my, my live my live reaction. Oh my god! Someone backed out. We got. How did that many people back out? We have three thousand now. Oh. <laughs> I know you're kidding. <laughs> no. Yeah. We're uh, we're about uh, three hundred away from uh, that, and that would. Unlock a stretch goal for more cards. Um, cool. So cool. That's I the call to arms for anybody watching. Like, chance, yeah. if you're un if you're unsure because you haven't played the game before, we're uh, two questions away from jumping into a play session, so you'll see what it yes. plays like. Um, but you should definitely check it out and uh, support the campaign. And uh, we did actually. We backed the uh, complete me level, uh, which gets us oh, like a ton of goodies. Um, the expansions and what blew my mind, which I still like, Josh couldn't believe it when I told him. So there's also an NES cartridge, right? Is it? And I can stick it into my actual NES, or like, what's yeah. the deal here? Yeah, yeah, it's a full um, NES cart. Um, the the front of so if you look at my company logo, my company logo is an NES cart, like an anthropomorphic NES cart. And so since I was making an NES version of the game. Uh, the sticker on that uh, cartridge is going to be that face. So it's going to be this cute little face. So even if you're not playing it, you can just kind of like put it on your desk and it's like this cute thing to uh, look at. Um, and uh, yeah, it's going to be, um, it's, since I'm only making one NES version of the game, <laughs> um, I'm, not, I'm not planning on making a full series of multiple NES versions of Billionaire Banshee. Um, it's kind of like a uh, best of sort of cool. situation. It has uh, cards from every version of the game uh so so um you know it could, it could kind of be like a a you know universal uh covering all the bases of of the the various versions so how on earth did you get your card game into an nes cartridge did you reprogram uh, well, the microcontroller the or something <laughs> um but uh, i went on to a uh demo scene uh, forum where you've got a bunch of people that are um, showing off how smart they are and, and <laughs> what crazy things they can do with old systems. Okay. And I was, I was hoping that some of them would maybe want to put out something that could make the money um, or at least get paid for it. Uh, and then I don't make money or do make money. I don't know. Uh, and uh, so there was someone that was willing to do that. And so basically since I think like the, a few months after the last Kickstarter uh, it's you know it's been like a year and a half or or more that we've been working on this NES version and, and you would think because I made the game all pixel art that I would just be able to sit you know copy paste um, the graphics into <laughs> the NES but uh, for some reason when I was making the cards I wasn't thinking of the limitations of the NES uh, <laughs> in image sizes and colors and quality uh, and so uh, I had to redo every single uh, graphic. Damn. Uh, for the NES version of the Damn. game. Damn, okay. And the best way to think about... If I actually did them one for one, you wouldn't actually be able to have that many cards in the game. Mm. But we're going to have a giant chunk of cards, and that's because cool. we're basically using... If you think about, like, if you ever played Super Mario Brothers, like, mm -hmm. one block pile in Super Mario Brothers, we're making the graphic for every card fit that amount of space. Right, okay. So <laughs> I've got to show, like, what that image is within that small amount of space... Wow. So that we can 
fit that many cards on the, in the game. So where's like the NES love come from? I mean, other than obvious places of NES rocks, but like, what, like, how come that's your um, game year uh, fun that logo? My, that was my that was my first um, you know video game system uh, that got me into uh, you know I, I played arcade games before that. That was my first you know thing that I that I owned and, and had my own games for, and uh, really fell in love with it. And I like the aesthetic and and everything about it. Um, and so it was kind of like, I have a bunch of dreams that are not very reasonable dreams, um, but I like to uh, I like to say them out loud as often as possible in case <laughs> someone's listening that can make them happen. Okay. Uh, so I'll just say on the stream right now, if anyone uh, wants me to help them make a Super Sentai show like Power Rangers, just let me know. Uh, <laughs> I don't know how to make rubber monsters, but I'd love to be involved in designing and, uh, okay. and writing uh, a, a rubber monster show like that. Cool. So there you go. That's an example of that. But that was one of the things I, my publisher said, is there any ridiculous thing you want to do to promote your game? And I said, hey, it'd be really cool if we made an NES version. Mm. And she said, okay, figure it out. And so. <laughs> Sweet. Awesome. Awesome publisher. Uh, yeah. yeah. Give a shout out to breaking games for real. They seem yep. super cool uh, su supporting you in this and, and partnering with you on it. So. I yeah, guess. they do uh, manufacturing too. They do the manufacturing for uh, Cards Against Humanity and uh, oh, cool. Exploding Kittens and a, a ton of other games oh, cool. within the tabletop scene. And so I'm sure you've seen all the different stunts that Cards Against Humanity does. Yeah, definitely. Um, uh, but they come up with those stunts, but then the logistics of it a lot of times fall to um, you know uh, my my publisher to figure out how to get them to happen. And so cool. they're kind of used to doing really strange uh, things like buying islands and things like that. <laughs> Guerrilla tactics. Right. Cool. Well, sweet. Well, uh, um, anything else you want to tell us about the Kickstarter before we dive into some billionaire banshee? Uh, no, there's the, there most of the things will uh, eventually be in stores, but there are a few rewards that are exclusive. Um, to the Kickstarter, so uh, if it is, uh, if you want to be uh, drawn in pixel art style or, um, you know, a few of the other things, uh, then uh, you might want to get it within the next two hours. Yeah, cool. <laughs> cool, all right. Well, um, well, thanks for answering all those questions, and I guess now it's no like our turn to answer some questions. My, my first right. one is, do we need to, do we need to shuffle the, the, the quirk and the, and, and the perk decks, or can we just play with them uh, right out the box? You don't need too, but you could, and then uh, you guys get your voting cards. We got our voting cards, our date or deny cards. Maybe we should show those here. So you got these cute kittens on the back, and then on the front, boom, date or deny. And we hit the uh, stretch goal on the expansion for uh, plastic uh, voting cards, and so because these are the cards that you're, unlike a lot of uh, tabletop games, I know some people put their cards in sleeves and things like that, but yeah. um, if you don't do that, uh, you know, unlike most card games where it's like you're only using a card once every however many turns, uh, these you know voting cards are getting used endlessly. Um, right. They're always out because that's how you're voting, and so uh, I've seen people spill beer on their cards, or you know, you know, Good they didn't wash their hands or whatever else, and so now it'll be really nice uh, because it'll be plastic, so you can just kind of wipe them off and uh <laughs> cool. so i'm looking forward to that even just from a demo perspective when i'm at conventions and i won't have to have that day four situation where i'm looking at like half black cards because people yeah. have real gross hands at conventions cool okay <laughs> all right well we're all shuffled over here so lead us through what are we doing okay so uh, let's say it's your turn first so the conceit of the game is that we're going to pretend that everyone playing the game is single and looking for a life partner and so you're about to meet someone that's ideal for you in every way, but you just found out this perk and quirk about them that's going to decide if you can spend your life with them or not, and we're both going to try to guess uh, what you would do. So cool. grab the perk first. So am I starting? Yeah, grab the perk and read aloud what that is. All right, so I got my perk. It says, they are a professional wrestler. Uh, they're popular, paid well, and on TV. They don't get injured. You can travel with them. Finishing movie called Tainted Love. Okay. <laughs> Sounds like a good finishing move. All right. All right. And that's what's the, the quirk? And what's the quirk? Let's see. Here's my quirk card, right? They have no teeth. <laughs> oh, gross. He has an 
awful poker face. Yeah. Oh yeah, I have to. That's right. I forgot that this is a game. I'm just over here going. Uh, won't wear dentures. I could. I could be messing with y'all. I could really like wrestling. Yeah, yeah. No, he, 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 you could hang teeth. Yeah, yeah. I you do. Love people with no teeth. Josh knows me so well. I mean. <laughs> They w- won't wear dentures, won't keep mouth closed forever. That seems like a very particularly specific thing. <laughs> people, people try to figure out any way to get around the, uh, the, 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 the trait they don't like. Healthy looking gums. Okay, all right. Uh, they smile with open mouth. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <Only gums smile. laughs> All right, so then I take, uh, if I understand correctly, I take a date or deny card, I put it secretly down, right? Yeah, you put one face down of what you would suddenly put down, what I think that uh, you're going to do here. <laughs> All right, I put mine down. Josh has his ready. So so you guys show first? Okay, so why did you vote that way? Why do you say deny? Because uh, fucking gums, right? <laughs> <laughs> I said uh, deny as well, and uh, the reason is um, you didn't seem super psyched by the wrestling uh, situation. <laughs> I got the sense that also like maybe like the taint isn't your favorite part of the body because you didn't even react to that part, um, and so I, I and you definitely didn't like the the gum situation. Uh, so that all led me to believe that you're gonna say deny. <laughs> And there we go. Denied. Said, oh my god, I'm so not into wrestling. Do not wrestle with me. Oh, <laughs> All right, who's up next? Okay, so we'll have uh, we'll have uh, Josh, nice hello. sober gentleman. Yeah. Hello, uh, yo. All right, what am I doing? Uh, All right, so first the perk. Yeah. Percolate. All right, read that out, and All you right. might have to get close to the close to the mic. <laughs> they are a wizard. They can cast 30 spells a day. <laughs> they won't use it against you and knows every spell you've ever heard of and more. Wow. Wow. Pretty good. Yeah. That beats wrestler. It's kind of unbelievable. And the quirk. <laughs> He's laughing. Whenever they speak, it's at yelling volume. <laughs> <laughs> they can't control it. It is easy to understand. They don't lose their voice, and it's not caused by bad hearing or related to mood. <laughs> this card is... Oh man, imagine being with a person. All right. Imagine being with a person in like an elevator or like on an airplane or something. I have to poo. <laughs> <laughs> this game makes me extremely immature. Yeah, it's the game's fault. I think I think I know Josh well. Are you ready, Josh? I'm ready. I'm like, can I go first? Yeah, you can go first. Josh is loud, man. Josh Josh <laughs> wants a person who will also be loud. And I, I don't know. Most of the time he'll be like, I wish that palm tree had a hammock on it. Boom, spell zap, you know? Like Yeah. Uh so this was a little bit this this if it was if it was a different combination, this would have been harder for me. Um, because I've been to, and you're saying that you know I didn't I didn't I didn't know Josh, and you're saying that he's 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 a loud uh, individual, um, but I know that uh, when I've gone to Germany, uh, I'm always the loud guy, and you know going through the German airport, I've never um, seen an airport that's so quiet. I actually thought there was nobody there. Um, it was it was as quiet as a cemetery there. Uh, so at, even even whispering, I felt like I was shouting. Uh, so I could potentially see it with a different uh, combination uh, saying deny, but the wizard thing is just too cool. And so I said date. I think he's got a lot of ideas as how he's going to use that. I did enjoy the wizard, the wizardry. Um, but I what? Oh, no, that is, shout, that, shout is, is that is a deny. Oh, too good. much, too much like so many members of my family. See? <laughs> I, should, I should have trusted it. I should have trusted the German part of it. I'm not German though, eh? <laughs> yeah, What's he's that? from uh, Scotland. Scottish. Oh, okay. All right. Where we do share. Well, you moved to Germany. Maybe that's why you moved to Germany. Yeah, for the you quiet. quiet. For the PC <laughs> quiet. <laughs> you want to be the loud asshole. You don't want anyone else to be. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. So now it's your turn, it's right? So turn, should yeah. we draw for you? You have, of course, you probably have I'll, a copy I'll, uh, of the game, I got right? Cards here. Let me, um, 
Let me draw some cards that you guys don't have. I'll draw a card Ooh. from the expansion here. Ooh. Cheat. And, uh... <laughs> Just as you're cheating. Who's winning, by the way? <clears throat> I mean, Josh uh, just well, missed out on dating a wizard. I feel like he's losing. <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, I think it's a uh, tie right now. Okay, okay. Well, no, you're losing, definitely. But it's a tie between Josh and I, because we both got one right. What? Why am I losing, definitely? You got nothing right. That's, that's why you're losing. Your one chance you had to answer something and you really messed it up. <laughs> so, so you'll never get that chance. So again. you only get points for guessing what other people do. You don't get points if people don't right. guess what you do, right? Because you're trying to answer right. truthfully. Right. Okay. Um, you don't get points for being well known, unwell known, non well known, unknown. What What's the word? Mysterious. Mysterious. Okay. All right. I got a combination here. I apologize in advance. I hope that this Twitch audience is okay with things that are that are risque. Um, so the the park here is let me let me show it there. Uh, if you drink their breast milk, you can breathe underwater. <laughs> that kind of looks like uh, Mario underwater what? section there, but there's like breast milks like leaking out there. Uh, so the effects last all day. They always lactate. Uh, the lactation is not gender based, so regardless of what you're into, uh, the milk tastes sweet and creamy. If that's a concern of yours, and they're cool with you slurping it. So that is the the perk. Maybe not to some people, but that's that's in the perk category. Okay. Okay. Now this one, this was the one that was a little. If it, that actually wasn't the one I was talking about, that was risky. But this one, uh, they fist you on special occasions. Whoa. And this. <laughs> That one is from the sexy pack. Um, so holidays, birthdays, celebrations. Uh, they use vegetable shortening. I need to comply. They have average size hands, and the whole hand must go in. So would I would I spend my life with someone if I drink their breast milk? I can breathe underwater, but they fist me on special occasions. Oh my! All right. Wow. And I've got uh, my my vote here. Easy. <clears throat> So easy. You want to go first? Yeah. They. What? <laughs> Why? Why? Well, you've got loads of kids running around in the background. You've probably had some breast milk anyway, and you've realized it's probably <laughs> all right. And you wrote the card about exactly fisting anyway, so you, you're probably down with that shit. So I'm thinking date. I'm thinking all of the date. And... Nah, he said, he said that he wasn't into bloodletting or whatever, and... I don't believe that Roslo swims. I think, I think, I think at best Roslo no, like a quick, quick dives. You know, like high, high dives or water slides, but not swimming. It's day, okay. total day. Well, one of you is like very far off. I love swimming. Damn. And I, I would what? love to just like relax, you know, underwater. I'm take a nap underwater. Roz. That'd be amazing. You know, go deep down and um, you know explore. It without having to worry about uh, survival um so that part is cool to me um my you know my 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 i don't have an issue with um with um butt exploration uh but uh <laughs> a fist is just too far for me Boom. so i say deny he was close he was close. He was close but it was it's the it's the fist part it's just you know you're not chivalrous. You accept what's given to you. Shocking. Felt better of you. Sorry to let you down like that. Oh wow! Should we go another round? Sure, we can do one more. What are we tied? What is this now? Equal tie. So, so yeah, yeah, yeah. Everyone's got one. Wow. Right now. All right. Yeah, this will be the tie round. All right, my perk. Uh, they can walk on any surface, can walk on walls or ceiling, even if surface is slippery, easy as walking on the ground. Their feet can feel pain, and they can't walk on water or air. And here you have a picture of, I guess, walking on the wall. That just sounds like a spider. <laughs> I have well, thoughts about this already. Have <laughs> I have thoughts about this already. I'm going to go ahead and flip my quirk. They are a skeleton named Jeffrey. <laughs> okay. 
What is even happening in this picture? Appear after eating special candy. Are the world's first esports skeleton. Love making puns about bones. Only no two bone puns. And it does say roundabout. What's going on here? Is there a reference that I'm missing? So uh, there's a in the first game as well as the expansion. There's uh, some um, you know video game ca- and, and board game cameo uh, cards. Ah. And so that's one of them. There's a video game called Roundabout. Got it. And okay. That, that uh, skeleton <laughs> shows up. Okay. Uh, All right. I see. All right, I think I'm ready. Oh. All right, I'll go uh, first, I guess. Um, <laughs> so, uh, I think that uh, you uh, were like you've seen like the Grudge and things like that, and and Exorcist and uh, Train Spotting, and I think that unlike most people, you got really turned on by you know. <laughs> The creatures walking on the walls and the ceiling. What? Uh, and I think that also um, you like individuals, you're, you're attracted to people who are uh, unhealthily thin, and it's always upset your friends. <laughs> and this is just like the most extreme version of it. <laughs> you're oh, literally wow. dating a skeleton. Roslo, <laughs> Roslo, what's going on? And Josh with the deny, if you can't see it from back there. <laughs> Josh with the deny. Fuck, it, fuck anything that sounds like spiders, no one sane would want that shit. So, you think I don't like the wall walking? I think, you know, I don't, none of it sounding good. Jeffrey skeleton, wall walking. <laughs> if you're being honest with yourself, you don't like any of it. Alright, so what I did was I thought about the wall walking. Alright, I thought about it. And honestly, it makes me hella fucking jealous. Excuse me. Yeah. For the children on the stream, but it does. Like, I want to walk on walls. I don't want to, what am I going to, how, are they going to help me walk on walls? No, they walk on walls. They're going to be walking all over the walls and the ceiling while I'm sitting regular gravity, you know? All right. And then I thought about this skeleton named Jeffrey and, you know, I like soft things, you know? I don't sleep in like a bag of bones, um, right? I have like pillow and like blanket and stuff. And also, I don't know what Jeffrey's doing, but Jeffrey looks like a super unsafe driver. Um, I got nothing against the name Jeffrey, but I like other spellings of it. So that was a that was a big ass deny from my <laughs> side. <laughs> All right. I also I'm not, but love making puns about bones wasn't too bad. But then only no two bone puns was like <laughs> right. You had a lot of repetition there. <laughs> <laughs> I need some originality in my life, right. you know. So what is that? Josh is up one point? Yeah. Get yep. it, get it right now. as we would say. All right. So you're up, Josh. You want me to... Should I service you? No, I'm all right. I can do it. I can <laughs> lean forwards. I've got a saucy bear. Watch out. Um, so the perk is that they are a virgin. Is that a perk? They've been waiting for you. They are interested in sex. They don't have to wait until marriage. And they are okay with waiting so, if you want to. Okay. okay. Can I see this beautiful image? The Virgin. <laughs> and the quirk is that they are in a band, frequently on tour or in the recording studio. Bandmates crash on your couch, obsessed fans constantly trying to sleep with them. It's an interesting combination. There are yeah. fans trying to sleep with the Chris, virgin. Christian rock band, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, all right. <laughs> what? Okay, wait, hang on. Let me just like deal with this for a minute. <laughs> and your browser is already ready to go. <laughs> they are a virgin and they're in a band. I do like music. Do but you them. also like sex. Do, do, do <laughs> it does say they are interested in sex, though. All right, I know what I'm saying. Yeah? Did I go first this time? Sure. I'm saying date, because I don't see anything wrong here. He can, he can jam out, and they, they seem like they've been waiting for him. They're at the Josh stop, you know, waiting for the Josh mobile to come by and rock their world. Right. So why, I mean, why not? That's, let's go. Uh, so, uh, I think that he's okay with the, uh, band, 
uh, situation. Uh, like you said, he likes uh, music. Um, but I think that he's into uh, really weird stuff, and he needs someone that's got the ability to pull it off. No, no, <laughs> so, no. Uh, no way. There we go. No! There we go. <laughs> Completely valid. Oh, Completely. come on. You can train people how to do the weird stuff that you're into. Uh, not whatever. How does he know so much about you already? I don't want to train people. I'm lazy. Look at me. <laughs> you already spoiled me for this. He's kind of lazy. <laughs> Over here at Quality Beast, like they'll do the training. Six months a year, I'll get to what I want to do. Once you get there. All right, you're gonna. This, this is the tiebreaker. So what? You're both. You're, you're both. It's, it's your turn, right? I, it's yours. It's, oh right, right, right. Okay. But yeah, but uh, you're both up a point now, right? Yeah. So I. Yeah, we're tied, and you're 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 still losing. So you're, you're being fisted. So if Josh and... gets this correct, he wins basically, sort of. Yeah. 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 Okay. And if not, maybe we go one more round with me to see if you can win. Okay. Um, one second. All right. And let me try to grab something from grab something from the expansion. Let me go back to the. Yeah. Okay, I'll do both from the expansion. So the perk is bring it up here. This is one that I wish the thing that you guys wanted, especially with that last answer you gave on yours. Uh, their butt makes a great pillow. Oh, nice. You were talking about wanting to sleep on your significant other that last time, <laughs> but they need to be like dead to you. I think you said in. To fluff them up like a pillow. <laughs> uh, they like when you sleep on it. Uh, you sleep better <clears throat> on it. You fall asleep right away. Uh, they'll try not to fart. And they're more comfortable than any other pillow. That's the perk. <laughs> the perk is that they have flamingo legs. <laughs> um, the legs are uh, double their body height. Their knees are by their butt. Their ankles are mid-leg. They have webbed feet. Uh, they won't ever have human legs. And they like to wear booty shorts to really show their legs off. <clears throat> You want to go first or you want me to go first? I'm happy to go first. It's a solid date over there. You love booty shorts. That's it. <laughs> All right. I also went for a date, but for different reasons. You look like a furry to me. It might be what you're wearing. And, like, you know, having that soft butt, but then also having those, you know, those beast legs, I think I think that gets you going. That was the, that was the date. Um, so I definitely like the uh, butt pillow element. Um, you know, butt or chest pillows I'm into, and, um, you know, I, I think the stamina to be able to stand for that length of time, especially with one leg, only one leg on the ground is really impressive, and I, I'd, I'd like to see that in action. So no, said, hey, that means he wins! Oh. There you go. <laughs> he was in the right zone. <laughs> in the zone for <laughs> <laughs> he was in the right zone. He's over in Josh land for sure. Well, awesome. I don't know. What do you think, Josh? You enjoy I it? vastly enjoyed that. I'm always happy winning, but I enjoyed that as well. <laughs> Super cool. Uh, a couple people uh, watching the stream were saying, very funny. So easy to play. You could take it to the bar. You could take it to a funeral. Uh, you could take it to a wedding. You could take it on a roller coaster ride. You could be playing in the back of the classroom, in the bathtub. Doesn't matter. Um, it's a really nice size box too. Good travel box size. The art. I love yeah, the, the art. Um, the third print version, which is the one that's gonna be on Kickstarter, um, show that here. Uh, so it's uh, kind of I try to change up the game for the better every time I get a new print run, and I also I guess hate having free time. Um, so this one is uh, a lot thicker, and the reason for that is when I originally made the game, I wasn't I wouldn't be so presumptive to assume that I would make expansions or other versions of right. the game, and so I just made it the size that it needed to be to hold the cards that were there. Um, now that I know that there's expansions incoming. Um, 
I, you know, I, I made the, the box for the original version bigger um, to be able to accommodate the cards that are now going to go in there. Um, and I had some people say, well, why don't you do that for the expansion? And that's just because um, the other purpose for the expansion is uh, to be a cheaper price point to get people in uh, on playing the game. That makes sense. And so, you know, it has, it has like 100 less cards. Um, you know, it's a lot smaller uh, box. Um, and uh, it, and it, but it still has all the voting cards and things that you need out of the box. So it could be an additive, uh, you know, experience. Or you could just start there, see if you like the game. And then go and get the original version after if you if you end up playing it a lot. Right, and there's variations too, right? We have uh, <clears throat> standard play, then eligible singles rules, then finger the match. Um, yeah, and then there's also uh, these blank cards uh, yep. that say blank on them, and there's a blank little figure, and then on the back they are, as you guessed it, blank, <laughs> so that you can uh, fill in your own information, which is pretty cool yep. for for people that. You know, want to extend the game themselves. So, yeah, really awesome, I, Maslow. Just in case there's anyone, I don't know like what your audience is typically like, but if you have anyone that watches uh, your uh, videos that actually does speak German, uh, there is a German version of the game. Cool. And it's you know a hundred of the best cards from the original version of the game, uh, all translated into German. Um, and you know, there were two things when I'd gone to uh, Essen Spiel uh, the a few times. And people wanted a cheaper entry point, uh, and they also, you know, some people don't have like even if they speak English, they don't have all their friends that do, mm. um, and so especially when they're drunk, <laughs> um, and so you know, we, we made this version uh, to to make it easy for 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 native uh, German speakers. <laughs> cool. Roslo, thank you so much. I think your campaign you. has, I don't know, 80 minutes left or something. So <laughs> there's really a small window now for people to jump in, you know, grab a copy of Billionaire Banshee. You saw us having fun. It's a hilarious game. It's easy. It's lightweight. It, there's nothing to learn uh, except for about each other. This is Queso, uh, who also wants to play. <laughs> Yeah, that's it for us today. Um, thank you so much for your time and congrats on the campaign. We're, thank you. We're, we're really rooting for you over here in Berlin. Thanks, guys. Nice talking with you. Yeah, Good. so I'm Dilkram, that's Razlo, this is Josh and Queso. We're Quality Beast, and we'll catch everybody next time. We out. <laughs>